Good day, my dear student. Today, we're going to talk about market integration. Last time, we're done discussing about the topic, the global economy or economic globalization. This time, we're going to move on to the next topic, which is the market integration. Expect that it will going to be a shorter discussion than the previous one. That is because uh, kakatapos na lang ng uh, preliminary examination like uh, 20 minutes ago. Alright, so now let's move on to the uh, topic market integration. First is introduction. Alright, so the social institutions that has one of the biggest impacts on society is the economy. So, you might think of the economy in terms of number. Number of unemployed, gross domestic product, or whatever the stock market is doing today. While we often talk about it in numerical terms, the economy is composed of people. It is the social institution that organizes all production, consumption, and trades of goods in the society. There are many ways in which products can be made, exchanged, and used. Think about capitalism or socialism. So this economic system and the economic revolution that created them shape the way people live their lives. All right, now, economic system vary from one society to another. But in any given economy, production typically splits into three sectors. What are those sectors? Okay, in connection to the um, economy. Okay, so, First is the primary sector, extract raw materials from natural environments. Alright, so para mas maging malinaw sa inyo, ano nga ba itong primary sector? So, sila yung uh, mga workers. Workers like farmers or miner fit well in the primary sectors. In which, um, yun nga, sila yung mga nagtrabahador, okay, na nakakakuha ng raw materials from natural environment. For example, oil, okay? So, oil production. So, sige, kaya dyan papatak yung secondary sector para mas maging malinaw sa inyo itong dalawa, no? So, connected yan sa isa't isa. So, the secondary sector gains the raw materials and transform them into manufactured goods. Meaning, itong secondary uh, sector Okay, for example, that someone from the primary sector nag-extract ng oil from the earth. Okay? Then, someone from the secondary sector refines the petroleum to gasoline. So, kung baga, taga-converte itong secondary sector. Taga-transform ng raw materials into manufactured goods. Okay? So, ayan. So, example din na mapapaisip tayo ano, sa mga primary uh, sectors. So, mga magsasaka. Okay? Pwede rin siyang pumatak doon. Ano? So, siyempre, mga worker yan. Eh. So, yan. Nag-aani sila no, ng mga palay. So, mga ganon. So, papatak yan sa primary sector. Then, doon naman sa mga, kumbaga, nagtatransform ng mga palay na ito into rice. Yan, dyan ang yung papatak sa secondary sector. Now, uh, let's move on to the uh, tertiary sector na sinasabi natin. Tertiary sector involves services rather than goods. It offers services by doing things rather than making things. Uh, Ganda rin ang idea ng ating tinatawag na tertiary sector. Uh, makikita daw ang kaunlaran ng isang uh, bansa. Okay, siyempre sa ekonomiya. And doon sa ekonomiya, makikita doon yung tertiary sector. 
kapag ka talaga ang mausbong yung tinatawag natin tertiary sector, okay? Doon sa ekonomiya na yon sa isang bansang yon ano? For example, so yun ang pinagbabasihan ng kaunlaran. Okay. So as an economy becomes more developed, it tends to shift its focus from primary to secondary and tertiary industries. So ngayon para mas maging malinaw sa inyo ano nga ba itong tertiary sector. Okay, given ng uh, ito yung parang pinagpapasihan talaga no, yung kaunlaran ng isang uh, lugar or ekonomiya no, ng isang lugar. So when we say tertiary uh, uh, sector, naklagay dito, it offers services by doing things rather than making things. Okay, sa paggawa. Okay, by doing things rather than uh, services siya, ano, by doing things rather than making things. Which mean talaga, services ang focus dito, hindi goods. Doon sa mga una at padalwa, ay goods talaga, ano, focus na yun. Ito na ang services. Ano nga ba itong mga services na sinatawag natin din eh? So for example na lang, di ba? Yung mga food service providers. Under noon, we have hotels and resorts. Okay? Aside from that, yung mga transportation system. Under noon ay mga taxi services. City bus. Okay, mga ganon. And then also, we have personal services like hospital, clinics, veterinarian, yan, mga ganon, ano? So, dyan papatak yung tertiary sector. So, pinagbabasihan kung gano'ng kaula na isang lugar, ano? Yan, sa tertiary sector. Pero, siyempre naman, uh, kung wala yung panimula, ano? So, siyempre, okay, hindi makakatungo sa tertiary sector. Okay, so, kung baga ang idea ng tertiary sector, ha, ay yung mga different institution or services na sinasawag natin, no? So, ayan. So, financial institution na rin, for example, yung mga banks or investment brokers, yan. Alright? So, to sum up, are yung primary ay raw materials. The secondary is the goods production. Alright? So, ayan, ang mga uh, kumbaga, pagpapaliwanag yan, ano? May claim, pagpapaliwanag with regards to the uh, three sectors na sinasabi ano okay sa production na related sa ekonomiya or economy all right now <clears throat> um well international financial institution so world economies have been brought closer together of course by globalization so kumbaga hindi na lingin sa ating kaalaman ng ating uh, pandaigdigang uh, ekonomi ang na sinasabi ay kundi dahil sa ating globalization hindi mas lalong nagdevelop okay so it is reflected in the praise when the american economy is diseased the rest of the world catches a cold meaning dahil maunlad yung bansang amerika ano isa sa pinaka makapangyarihan na uh, maunlad na bansa Kapag ka nagkaroon ng, uh, sabihin na natin na uh, pagbabago sa kanilang ekonomiya, for example, umusbong ang kanilang ekonomiya, the rest of the world daw, ano, maapektuhan. So, ganun ang idea ng kasabihan na yun, ano, na when the American economy is diseased, the rest of the world catches a cold. Alright. Now, um, for instance, the financial uh, crisis, Experienced by Russia and Asia affected the world economy. Okay? Dahil nga, siyempre, malalaking bansa. O partner rin tayo, siyempre, ng Asia. Under ng Southeast Asia. Tsaka kung ano namang mga Asian country, ano, na sinasabi natin. Like, for example, China, Japan. Okay, maunlad na bansa rin siya, no? Malalaking bansa. Okay, yung kanilang ekonomiya, kung titingnan natin. Now, Umaga, nakaka-apekto sa world economy. Uh, the strength of a more powerful economy brings greater effect on other countries. So, in the same manner, crises on weaker economies have less effect on other countries. For example, ano, uh, Argentina's 
serious financial crisis in the late 1990s and the early 20s or 2000s had a comparatively small impact on the global economy. Since masasabi natin yung uh, country na Argentina ay hindi ganong kaunlad. Kaya parang dating ay hindi talagang kunti lang yung epekto niyan sa buong mundo na ekonomiya na sinasabi natin dito. Alright? So, uh, I think let's move on to the next. Ano? So, tapos na tayo dito sa introduction ng market integration. Now, let's move on to the next ano? discussion ng ating uh, uh, topic na ito ng market integration. So, market integration. So, ano nga ba kapag ka sinabi natin market integration? Nakalagi dito, it refers to how easily two or more markets can trade with each other. Alright? It occurs when prices among different locations or related goods follow similar patterns over a long period of time. Groups of prices often move proportionally to each other and when this relation is very clear among different markets, it is said that the market are integrated. Now, ang unang pumasok sa aking ideya dito, no, nung nabasa ko itong concept ng uh, market integration na sinasabi ay yung SRP or Suggested Retail Price. Di ba? Related siya dun sa tinatawag natin na regulated market in which uh, nagkakaroon ng intervention uh, dahil ng gobyerno no? dun sa pag-control ng uh, prices sa ating uh, ekonomiya okay, sa market, ano? public market specifically. So, yun ang sinasabi natin. Now, di ba, kapag ka sinabi SRP, Suggested Retail Price, so in connection to this uh, market integration, ay kung ano talaga yung presyo okay, na sinabi or in-implement ng uh, gobyerno or taga pamahala ng mga ganyan, ano? okay, kung ano mga ahensya yan. So, kumaga, yun ang sinusundan, yung SRP. So, for example na lang, yung common uh, presyo ng uh, bigas, 41 pesos, 42 pesos, something like that. Ranging from that uh, prices, ano? So, kumbaga, sa paglipas ng panahon ay consistent yung presyo. Pero na lang kapag ka talagang uh, kumbaga, dahil ng production of materials ano, yung mga ganyan, yun naman ay common din na nangyayari sa mga karne. No? Yung talagang uh, mabilis ang uh, pagbabago-bago ng presyo. So, ganun. Pero ang idea na sinasabi natin dito, no? for example, doon sa price ng alamang, ano, ay mahirap magbago or magpalit ng presyo. Okay, kung mapapansin natin. Now, connected na siya dun sa SRP, or dito, ano, connected yung SRP dun sa market integration. So, kung babasahin natin ulit, ano, dito sa market in integration, refers to how easily two or more markets can trade with each other. Aside from that, ano, uh, it occurs when prices among different location or related goods follow similar patterns over a long period of time. Yung similar patterns na yun, siyempre, um, commonly yung prices na sinasabi natin kanina, no? Yan. Kahit nasabihin na natin na sa ibang lugar, so kaya nga nakalagay dito, no? So parang ganun pa rin yung standard na sinasabi yung presyo ng goods na yun. Okay? So, then next, kung babasahin natin na lady, eh, Groups of prices open uh, move proportionally to each other. And when this relation is very clear among different markets, it is said that the markets are integrated. Alright. Now, let's move on to the next. Oh, meron pa palang explanation dito, no? With regards to uh, market integration. Nakalagay dito, no? Uh, it may also refer to the movement of prices of related goods and services sold in a defined geographical location in similar patterns. So, parang din din naman pala ng explanation dun sa kanina, no? 
So, when government implements certain strategy to control the direction of economy, then integration is intentional while simply shifting in supply and demand that has a spillover effect on several markets is another factor of market integration. So, ayun, parang ganun na rin ang sinabi ko kanina. So, sige. Next. Nakalagay dito, ano? So, one way of helping integration daw, ano? Um, of market by reducing barrier to trade and increasing fluidity between market is through foreign trade. But, before we move on to that, um, well, the term market integration is further used in identifying re related phenomenon of market of goods and services you know, nga, no? experiencing similar patterns of increase or decrease in prices of products. Now, going back dito sa ating panguling na binasa, no? One way of helping integration of market, okay? One way daw of helping integration of market by reducing barrier to trade and increasing fluidity between market through foreign trade. So, makikita mo pa lamang dito, ano, barrier, reducing barrier. Di ba yung mga trade barrier na sinasabi natin yung mga tariffs, sa mga quotas that we discussed, ano, in our previous lesson. Alright? Kaya para consistent yung price, ano, so, reduce daw yung mga ganun. So, di ba, kapag consistent, dyan napapasok yung market integration. Now, reducing barriers to trade and increasing fluidity between market is through foreign trade. Okay, foreign trade daw ang sinasabi dito. Now, um, I think let's uh, move on to the next. We have types of related markets where market integration occurs. But going back dito sa atin, to give you an example na sinasabi dito, um, well, for example, China produces toys at a cheaper price than the U.S. So, if foreign trade increase between the two countries, uh, toys could be sold to the U.S. more easily, making them more available, thus reducing price. So, if the demand for a baby dolls within a given geographical market were to suddenly be reduced by 50%, there is a good chance that the demand for a baby doll clothing would also decrease in the proportion within that same geographical market. Should the baby market increase, this would usually mean that the market for doll clothing or clothing would also increase. Both market would have the chance to adjust pricing in order to deal with the new circumstances surrounding the demand as well as adjust other factors such as production. Alright? Now, let's move on to the next. The types of related markets where market integration occurs. Ito na, no? kapag daw yung market integra integration ay nangyari, ano daw yung mga types of related market na sinasabi? Una, ay, are, are yung pinaka-common actually yung stock market. Sige, bigyan natin na linaw kung ano ba itong stock market. Nakalagay dito, stock market integrations. This is a condition in which stock market in different countries trend together, okay? And depicts same expected risk adjusted returns. So, sige, mamaya, discuss natin kung ano ba ito. Two markets are perfectly integrated if investor can pass from one market to another without paying any extra cost and if there are possibility of arbitration which ensure the 
equivalence of stock prices on both markets. Sige, basahin natin uli, ano? So, para mas maintindihan natin, nakalagay dito, two markets are perfectly integrated if investor can pass from one market to another without paying any extra cost, meaning equal. Walang labis, walang kulang, equal lang talaga yung kumbaga trading between two, okay, two, uh, kumbaga two market, okay. And if there are possibility of arbitration, which ensure the equivalence of stock prices on both market. Now, ano nga ba kapag ka sinabi na itong uh, mga stock market na ito? First, we're going to uh, go to the word stock. So, ano ba kapag ka sinabi ng stock? Well, um, aring stock, it is also known as equity. Okay? Parang ang dating ay talagang equal, ano? equity. So, pantay-pantay. So, a stock is a security that represent the ownership of a fraction of a corporation. Alright? So, this entitles the owner of the stock to a proportion of the corporation asset and profits equal to how much stock they own. So, unit of stock are called shares. Kaya may mga tinatag tayo ng mga shareholders. Now, Ano ba kapag ka sinabi natin stock market? Stock market are where individual and institutional investor come together to buy and sell shares in a public venue. So, gana rin. Uh, maikling explanation with regards to the stock, the stock market. Ang idea ay since bumili ka ng uh, sabihin na natin na uh, uh, stock So, sinasabi natin din eh, no? Okay? So, kumaga, parte ka na ng tinatawag na corporation. Okay? So, kapag ka nagkakaroon ng mga investment na tinatawag, ano? So, this entitles the owner of the stock to a proportion of the corporation asset and profits equal to how much stock they own. For example, sa isang uh, samahan. Ngayon, Uh, stock market, yung mga stock exchanges, in which uh, pinapatakbo, okay, ng iba't ibang mga tao. Since bumili ka ng stock doon, ano, so ngayon, once na nagkaroon ng development, nagkaroon ng improvement, umunlad, okay, yung corporation. So, since parte ka na ng ownership ng corporation na yun, ano, for example, corporation A, parte ka ng corporation A na yun, Since bumili ka ng stock doon, okay? So, once na umulad yung corporation na yon, so, syempre, magkakaroon ka na na, dun, na share, kumbaga, no? So, yun ang sinasabi natin dito. Doon sa stock market, okay? So, mga stock market exchange. Actually, sa ngayon, medyo complex na siya, no? Yung mga, with regards to this stock market exchange. So, makikita natin, um, yung mga numerical terms. Okay, sa iba't ibang bansa, okay, makikita natin iba't iba yung uh, value. Kaya nga tinatawag dito, ano, stock market in different countries trend, trend together, and depicts same expected risk adjustment returns. Minsan bumababa, minsan tumataas yung mga palitan, or sabihin na natin yung uh, nagkakaroon ng fluctuation, ano, so hindi natin alam, magiging resulta. So, medyo risky rin kasi, no, kapag ka pumasok ka sa mundo ng stock exchange, yung mga tao nag invest ano, tama ganyan. For example, yung mga bitcoins, yung mga forex, yun yung mga nakikita nyo rin, ano, sa Facebook. Okay? Uh, automatically, mapapaisip ko, ah, yung mga nagko-comment sa Facebook, ano, randomly, ah, uh, yan, related siya dun sa mga stock, ano, stock market, stock exchange, yung mga investment na yan, ano. So, hindi lang natin alam yung specific na kanilang ginagawa. Pero that's the idea. Kung mapapansin mo, no? So, kapag ka pumunta ka ng Facebook, yung common, ano? Lalo na sa mga public, public affairs, such as mga GMA or ABS-CBN, yan, mga ganyan. So, pag nakita mo, ay yung mga comment. Yung iba, ay sasabihin mo, ah, nag-comment naman itong mga scammer na ito. 
So, kontakin daw si ganito, ganoon. You know, yan. So, ayan ha. Yun ay related sa tinatawag natin mga stock exchange, stock market. So, para ang dating kasi din yan ay referral. Ano? So, yan. So, anyway, we're not going to focus more about that. No? At mapapatagal tayo. And we're going to discuss that in a more detailed way. So, what's the idea? Yun, no? mga stock. So, investment. Yung mga forex, bitcoin. Alright. So, pero risky siya, no? Risky. Talaga. Kailangan talaga, kapag ka papasok ka sa mga stock exchange na sinasabi natin, ay may talagang maayos kang knowledge with regards to that, no? Para hindi ka magoyo or hindi ka mapaikot. Okay? So, kapag ka tumatagal yung panahon, for example, nag-invest ka ngayon, then pagka tumagal, Uh, lalaki yan, lalago. No? So, pero depende pa rin yan ano, kung gaano kalawig, kalawig ano, yung pag-usbong, paglaki, pag-develop nung uh, iyong in-invest. So dapat talaga knowledgeable ka para sa mga, about dun sa mga investment na yan bago mo pasukin. So yun ang aking advice with regards to that. Now, so okay na tayo dyan, ha? So stock market integration. Okay, so now let's move on to the next, I think, yan. Financial market integration naman tayo. So, nakalagay dito, no? It is an open market economy between countries facilitated by a common currency and the elimination of technical, regulatory, and tax differences to encourage free flow of capital and investment across border. So, yun na nga, no? Parang ang idea rin ay ayaw ng intervention Walang intervention or restricted lang ang intervention ng gobyerno. Okay? Para magkaroon ng tinatawag natin na nakalagay dito, no? free flow of capital. Ano? So, di ba kapag ka related to, sa capital, capitalism, private lang siya. Kung may ari ng private. So, yan. Now, kung babasahin natin ulit ano? dito sa ating uh, financial market integration, It is an open market economy between countries facilitated by a common currency and the elimination of technical, regulatory, and tax differences yung sinasabi ko kanina, no? To encourage free flow of capital and investment across borders. Yan ay tawag dyan ay financial market integration para ma-maintain nga naman yung uh, sa market yung mga ating uh, finances, ano? Yan sa market. Now, um, emergence of similar patterns, okay? So, within the capital, stock, and financial market. Ano? Yan, nakalagay na pala dyan, ano? So, basahin natin. Uh, next, it occurs when lending rates in several uh, different markets begin to move in tandem with one another. So, basahin natin ulit para mas maintindihan natin. It occurs when lending rates in several different markets begin to move in tandem with one another. So, nagkakasundo, ano? Yung mga percentage kapag ka nagkakaroon ng mga loaning, ano? Or naglo-loan. Lending nga, eh, ano? So, ayan. Related siya sa mga ganun. So, ayan. Ang sinasabi natin, kung bagang mapanatili yung uh, tinatawag natin ng pag-ikot ng ating, kung baga, yung mga pera, ano? Ayan. So, emergence of similar patterns within the capital, stock, capital, the stock, and financial market with those trends coming together to exert a profound influence on the economy of that nation is involved in the integration within a nation. Alright? So, ayan. Now, let's move on to the next. We have, uh, I think, ito na, no? Global Corporation. But the thing is, ito naman ay kaong muna actually. Kasi nga, we talk about international corporation or international trade pa rin, ano? Pero, yan, ano? So, hindi na rin ito masyado bago sa inyo kasi we have multinational uh, corporation, transnational corporation pa lang related doon, ano? Sa aking pagkakalala. Dito sa Global Corporation. Now, kung mababasa natin dito, Global Corporation is a business that operates in two or more countries. So, yan na nga, no? nakalagay pala din dito related sa dun sa multinational company. 
or multinational corporation. So, ibig sabihin, um, ito ay business. Ngayon, nagkakaroon ng operation sa iba't ibang bansa. No? So, ayan. So, it is also goes by the name multinational company. Several advantages are offered by global expansion of business over running a strictly domestic company. So, kaya tumataas din yung mga foreign trade investment ano, dahil sa mga ganare. Kasi yung iyong, uh, for example, yung isang uh, company, isang brand, ano, yung mga common na nakikita natin, kagaya na sabi ko, okay, yung mga transnational corporation, we have uh, Coca-Cola, basta kahit ano man yun, actually, kahit yung mga Facebook, yan, company siya, na nangyayari, or talaga nagkakaroon ng implementation or operation sa iba't ibang bansa. Ang mga Google, okay, yung mga Macdo, okay, yung mga, basta yung mga uh, nakikita natin sa ibang bansa rin. Ano? Kahit na hindi siya yung mga food services, pero sinasabi natin yung mga Facebook with regards to the information, ano? yung mga Google, yan, company. Now, naklagay dito, ano? several advantages are offered by global expansion of business over running a strictly domestic company. Alright? So, well, uh, next, may example pala dito, no? but success in different types of economy is achieved by means of multiple countries' operation while it causes also logistic and cultural challenges. Kasi tinitingnan din natin dito, no? bagaman, uh, yun nga, no? masasabi natin, dahil ito ay tumatakbo sa iba't ibang bansa. So, siyempre, mas malaki ang uh, investment dito. Ano? Mas malaki ang kita rito. So, multiple countries operation. Pero, ang disadvantage nito ay yung log logistic and cultural challenges. Which means, di ba kapag ka sinabi ng logistic, uh, it talks about delivery. Ano? Yung, for example, yung mga services. Ano? So, pag kami pagkukunan ka talaga yung pinaka-main. Uh, so, kailangan mo pang Kumbaga, pumunta doon sa central, ano? Central office, mga ganun. So, logistic and cultural challenges. Which means, kapag ka sinabi natin cultural challenges, since nasa ibang country ka, okay, siyempre, ba't iba yung parang kanilang views or opinion doon sa produkto or doon sa uh, services na pinaprovide mo, ano? Ng iyong uh, company na yun. Alright? So, yun ang masasabi natin dito. Now, uh, to give an example of this, ano, sa ating uh, global uh, corporation, ang sinasabi, so one can find more customers in a country whose economy is vibrant and expanding in lieu of a stagnant local and domestic economy or market share that has hit a plateau. Okay? So, lalo na kapag ka sa mga mas interesado ano, na country, with regards to your uh, product or services. Okay? So, yan. Yan ang sinasabi natin dito sa example. Mas malaki ang hata. Now, let's move on to the historical periods of global corporation na sinasabi dito. So, basahin muna natin, ano? Um, in early historical periods, as both cities and countries extended their reach beyond their own borders, a form of globalization was initiated which then followed complex patterns of interactive engagement organized through trade and industry directly influenced by the emergence and subsequently dominant technology, especially in shipping and navigation. Okay, well, um, ano ba next dito? So the entities operating within the within this environment were functionally and organizationally not different from contemporary organization. So being possessed with head offices, a uh, foreign branch plan, corporate hierarchies, extra extraterritorial business law, and even a bit of foreign direct investment and value-added activity. Alright? Now, 
uh, with regards to this historical periods of global uh, corporation, well, co combination of invention and social organization resulting to increase in worldwide capital and wealth of nation is allowed by modern nation state system that emerged in the period prior to the end of World War II. Now, nakalagay dito, American Corporation led the economy recovery and expansion after the World War II destruction. Since talaga mapinsala yung World War II, ano? ating ekonomiya, okay, nagkaroon na rin naman kahit paano after nung World War II, okay, ng economic recovery and expansion yung American Corporation. Okay, so lagi ng America, no? kasi nga, yun ay powerful country. Now, um, next, this period up to the re-entry of Japanese and European Corporation to the global scene is viewed as multinational corporation from the end of the World War II to the present is considered a period of transformation of global corporation. Yan, tandaan nyo siya, no? From the end of World War II down to the present, simula nung natapos yung World War II hanggang ngayon, I consider the period of transformation of global corporation kasi marami na napagdaanan ng ating daigdig. Ano yun, yung mga World War na yan. At saka yung Hindi ko alam kung binanggit ko yung uh, nilatawag natin na The Great Depression in which noong 1921, if I'm not mistaken, so nagkaroon ng uh, economic uh, crisis talaga during that time. That is because, hindi naman siya, ano, ha, hindi siya dahil ng uh, World War. That is because of the panic of people, bank, uh, panic in banking, yung mga ganun, no? At saka kung ano-ano pa, no, during that time. Kaya nagkaroon ng Great Depression na tinatawag natin in which talagang bumagsak yung ekonomiya during that time, lalo na dun sa mga malalaking bansa. No? So, yan. So, now, in relation to that, kaya nakalagay dito din, bukod pa naman ito, no? dun sa kwento ng uh, the Great Depression sa World War II. From the end of World War II to the present, is considered a period of transformation of global corporation. Alright? Now, Let's move on to the next. Ito na, no? Second. I think ito ay... Hindi. Sige. Uh, the finance function in a global corporation naman tayo. Let's move on to the next na, no? The finance function in a global corporation. Well, as corporation go global, okay, or worldwide, Capital markets open up within them, giving companies a powerful mechanism for arbitrage across national financial market. Now, then papasok yung tinatawag natin na chief financial officer. So, ano nga ba kapag sinabi natin uh, finance, chief financial officer? Nakalagay um, dito, no? Chief financial officer must balance the opportunities with the challenges of operating in multiple environments in managing their internal market and building an advantage. So, ito yun, nangangasiwa, no? Chief Financial Officer. So, ngayon, para mas magiging uh, linaw para sa atin kung ano itong Chief Financial Officer. So, sige nga, basahin nga natin ulit para mas maintindihan natin. Must balance the opportunities with the challenges of operating in multiple environment in managing their internal market in building an advantage. Ngayon, parang idea dito ay papasok na yung mga chief financial officer when it's come to uh, sabi na natin uh, yun nga, multinational uh, corporation. Kapag ka nagpapatakbo ka ng mga multinational company or corporation yung mga ganyan, so dyan napapasok yung chief financial officer para uh, for your own good nga, no? Kumaga, managing their internal market and building an advantage. Yan ang sinasabi natin, ha? Chief Financial Officer. Now, um, nakalagay dito, this three function can be created by CFOs through exploiting their internal capital market. Okay, so, ano ba yung mga three function na sinasabi natin dito na kinerate ng CFO? 
ex through exploiting their internal capital market. Number one, we have financing. Sige, basa na lang siguro natin ano ito mga terminology dito. Now, number one, a group tax a group tax bill can be reduced by the CFO like borrowing in countries with high tax rates and lending to operation in countries in countries with lower rates. Okay. So para makatipid ano, so uh, ginagawang advantage ng chief financial officer yung mga ganyan para ano, no? borrowing in countries with high tax rates and lending to operation in countries with lower rates. All right, now next, uh, risk management. Global firms can offset natural currency exposure through worldwide operation instead of managing currency exposure through financial market. Next, capital budgeting. Getting smarter on valuing investment opportunity, CFO can add value. Okay? Yan. So again, let's move on to the next na kagad, no? We have foreign direct investment. So talagang binibilisan natin since uh, sabi ko, mabilis lang tayo. Okay. <clears throat> Sige, basahin lang muna natin itong foreign direct investment. Nakalagay dito sa ating uh, foreign uh, direct investment, ito parang pinahapyawan kong sabihin ano, kanina with regards to this foreign uh, direct investment. Now, nakalagay dito, it is a major driver of extended global corporate development. It is an investment made by a company or individual in one country in business interest in another country. So, kumbaga, pinapatakbo niya ito. Yung isang uh, company, okay? Alright? Nagkakaroon siya ng investment dito sa company na ito. In one country, in business interest in another country. Na ang mga iyong client or customer ay foreigner. So, foreign direct investment. So, parang di ba, ang ginamit natin example na simple lamang na example ay yung call center. Okay? So, in the form of either establishing business operation or acquiring business asset in the other country such as an ownership, or controlling interest in a foreign company. And the key feature of foreign direct investment is that it is an investment made that establishes either effective control of or at least substantial influence over the decision making of a foreign business. Alright? Alright, now, um, to give you some information with regards to this uh, foreign direct investment, so, well, foreign direct investment is made open to economies. Frequently involves more than just a capital investment and includes provision of management or technology as well. So, there are many uh, methods to establish uh, this foreign uh, direct investment such as opening a subsidiary or associate company in a foreign country, acquiring a controlling interest in an existing foreign company, or by means of merger or joint venture with a foreign company. Alright? Now, let's move on to the second to the last topic or lesson that we have in this uh, particular uh, topic, the market integration. Now, uh, BRICS economies. Ano ba? Kapag ka sinabi natin BRICS economies, we have Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Is an acronym for the combined economies of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. So, ngayon, ano nga ba itong BRICS economies na ito? Alright. So, nakalagay dito, no? Um, BRICS without South Africa, ano, was originally coined in 2003 by Goldman Sachs, which speculates that by 2015, these four economies will be the most dominant. Okay, most dominant nga naman daw, ano? So, ang pinagtataka ko lang dito, ano, napasama nga naman yung South Africa. 
'di ba? Ang South Africa ay kilala sa isa sa pinakamahirap na bansa sa buong mundo. Ngayon, bakit siya napasama din eh? So, kaya nakalagay din eh, no? South Africa was added to the list on April 13, 2011, creating BRICS. Kaya sinama na, no? So, pero hindi natin alam yung masyadong mas detalyado. Ano? Kaya ko bakit sinama yung South Africa dito. Pero, komo naman, ano? Kung makikita natin dito, ari mga country na binanggit, ano? Sa samahan na ito. We have Russia. ba diba, Russia, kung makikita pa lang natin ang kanilang bansa, napakalaki. Napakalang bansa. At saka rin China. So, ari yung mga pinakamalalaking bansa, no? Russia, China. So, ngayon, yan, dumagdag yung mga India, Brazil, yan. Ito lang yung panghuli, ano? South Africa. So, break siya. So, sinasabi na these four economies will be the most dominant when it comes to economies. Pero, pinagtataka ko, well, hindi kasama dito yung US. So, siguro, siyempre, may dahilan kung bakit. No? So, anyway, so, yan. Nakalagay sa ating BRICS economies na sinasabi. And also, these five countries were among the fastest growing emerging market as of 2011. Yung mga nabanggit na country. Yung limang yan. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Brazil, uh, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Said to be them uh, among the fastest growing emerging market as of 2011. Alright, now, further, Brazil, uh, Russia, India, and China refer to the idea that China and India will, by 2050, become a uh, the world's dominant supplier of manufactured goods and services respectively while Brazil and Russia will become similarly dominant as supplier of raw material. So, para talagang iniiwan yung South Africa, no? So, ganun ang nakikita natin dito. Ah, kaya dito, kung mapapansin natin, kung babalikan natin, these four economies will be the most dominant. Hindi talaga sinama yung South Africa. So, yan. Anyway, ya yeah, masaya na lang natin ano. Makikita natin na mas magiging dominant daw ito no sa mga countries na binanggit pagdating ng 2015. Okay, ito na lang particularly yung China and India. Dominant supplier of manufactured goods and services. Pero sa China, sa napapansin ko talaga ang dominant yan ano. So, ang daming produkto nang galing sa China made in China. So, tsaka kung makipapansin niyo na lang ano Kung pupunta kayo sa mga online shopping, we have Lazada, Shopee, and such other like Amazon, eBay, mga ganyan. So, makipapansin natin, uh, marami doon din, bukod sa ating home country, ay galing sa China. Okay? Kaya, hindi na bago. Hindi na, kumbaga, uh, masasabi natin, hindi nakakapagtaka na maaaring maging most dominant supplier of manufactured goods and services yung China. O pati pala daw India, no? Lagi dito, no? So, while Brazil and Russia will become similarly dominant as supplier of raw material. Supplier lang, ano? So, yan. So, sige. Uh, let's uh, proceed to the next, I think. It is the last, I think. Yeah, General uh, Agreement on Trade and Services or GATS. Ano ba kapag kasi sinabi natin GATS? So, the uh, General Agreement on Trade. Sige, basahan na lang siguro natin, ano? Uh, kung ano ba itong gets na sinasabi natin din eh. Yan. Nakalagay dito sa first paragraph is the first multilateral multi agreement covering trade in, service, trade in services which was negotiated during the last round of multilateral trade negotiation called the Uruguay Round and came into the force in 1995. So the GATS provide the framework of rules governing services trade, establishes a mechanism for countries to make commitment to liberalize trade in services and provides a mechanism for resolving dispute between countries. Parang idea ay ano ano? Uh, related siya dun sa mga trade policy but since ito ay trade in services na no hindi policies mismo merong uh, kumbaga ay uh, kumbaga station 
or uh, masasandigan ka na services. Ano? Na tinatawag natin na General Agreement on Trade and Services. Now, uh, GATS has similar principle with a General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade that deals with trade in goods. Actually, ito naman mga binabanggit natin, ito ay halos magkakapres lang din naman, ano? yung mga definition nila. Ano? So, kumbaga, iba lang yung kanilang nasasakupan. So, parang ganun din naman ang idea niya. Ano? So, kaya huwag na natin masyado pang palawigin pa. So, yan. Kaya nakalagay dito, yung GATS, so General Agreement on Trade and Services, I have similar principles sa tinatawag natin na General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. So, the, true, the two primary objective of GATS are to ensure that all signatories are treated or treated equitably when accessing foreign market and second to promote progressive liberalization of trade and services. Ayan. Ayan, ano? So, dyan, nagtatapos ang ating lesson with regard to market integration. So, hindi ko alam kung uh, napahaba na, no? Sabi ko, may clear lang. But, at least, natapos natin itong uh, Mm, sa tingin ko, medyo maikli nating uh, discussion with regards to uh, market integration. So, I hope you learned something new from this again. Ano? Okay, so thank you for listening. So, God bless and have a nice day.